Each crew generates 100,000 revenue a month. We're selling about $200,000 a day. We're on track to install about 1,000 decks this year, about a million dollars worth of product a month. And this year we're gonna be doing 30 to 50 million. My name is Adam Rott. My business is Green Shield Deck Builders. We've been in business for three, four years. We primarily started in family safety products like radon mitigation and water filtration. And we really found a niche in decks uh, mainly because our customers were asking for them. We did a couple and really, really started to like them. Now we only do decks. We're on track to install about a thousand decks this year. Based on everything that I've found, we are one of the largest deck builders and we love doing it. We love building decks. So when we first started our business, we were in radon mitigation, water filtration, and sales were okay, but not great. Customers didn't seem too interested in, in safety products regarding the home. We really needed to find a, a niche. And what we ended up finding was that decks was our niche. When we were first starting, you know, we had just me. I was the only builder. But now, uh, you know, you just, you add one crew at a time, figure out your systems. We started the business, COVID hit, and we were getting our sales primarily door to door, as a lot of new businesses do. Essentially, when you're when you're selling door to door during a pandemic, sales are not going to be adequate. We struggled a lot in the beginning. We pivoted to different different ways to get leads through Angie's List, Home Advisor, highly recommend. And uh, we continued to do door to door when possible, only if permit is is able. And during a pandemic, permits not but ideal. So, what are some of the things that you had to invest in to transition into deck building, and what was the process of that? Deck building uh, requires specific tools. So, what we found is, in order to have a consistent quality deck product, a finished product, we have to have the same tools, the same equipment, and the same training for all employees. So. What we implemented is we stuck with one specific tool brand. It may be the best, may not be the best. We picked DeWalt as our tool brand, so all of our crews have the exact same set of tools. And one tool that's really critical that a lot of deck builders miss is a track saw. It gives you a consistent quality cuts and that finish with composite. So I would say that's one, one big tool that you would want to invest in if you were a deck builder. And I would say, secondly, um, we have the same trailers. So we use a 16 foot aluminum enclosed trailer with a roof rack. So every trailer is outfitted exactly the same. And that helps us to ramp up quickly with demand. From back then to now, what were your day-to-day -day operations and how have they changed throughout? So day-to-day -day operations have changed um, in a lot of ways. So firstly, I was doing the vast majority the work. I've always struggled with sales, so I have a business partner that does the sales part, and I was always kind of producing from managing the job to completing the job to picking my own orders, making my own material list to fulfilling. And now, as you grow in any company, what you really want to do is, is have each specific job function done by a certain person. So one person's doing material lists, one person's doing drawings, one person's doing permits, one person's doing doing another thing. So you get specialized. Everybody can specialize. And right now we're, we're hyper specialized. We've got um, a drafting team, a permit team, project managers, supervisors, and everybody's got a core function so that nobody's relying on me. So I can not necessarily step away, but I can work on bigger, better things to help grow the company with better partnerships with manufacturers and things like that. How many total employees are you at now? So we broke 100 employees. So that's great because we get better insurance rates. And it's really something great about being able to provide a really really great job for young men and young women even to work with their hands, be fulfilled, great pay, great benefits, paid time off, PTO, health insurance, stuff like that. So we, we love we love our employees and we don't use subs like other builders. It's really common for builders to use subcontractors. We, we don't use subs at all. And then I've seen some of your billboards. Is there any other advertising that you guys focus on? So billboards is one of our big, big spends. So what we do is deck building's a bell curve, right? So the vast majority of your sales, you know, they start spiking up in March. They sustain for about six months and then you know drop off. So you really have a short window of, of ad spend. So you really have to go hard. So right now, you know, it may look like I'm spending 20% of my gross profit on, on advertising. However, you gotta extrapolate it through the whole year. So we use billboards as one of our main drivers. There's obviously Home Advisor, Angie's List, and you know, social media is, is great. We found that social media is actually seem to be almost overpriced attention, at least for a smaller business. For some reason, it's extremely flat maybe because of the, just the way the market is going. We found that traditional advertising is actually a higher ROI. It's also our clientele is older and they typically use things like newspapers and billboards. Maybe that's part of it. 
I'm not exactly sure. We're, we do social media, we do actually all types of advertising from magazines to flyers to door to door. But obviously you see our billboards, we're, we're big into billboards. We like our deals so we get on billboards. The more you buy, the better the price. So our billboard ad spend is about 200,000 right now a month. Um, and that obviously is gonna trickle down through the year. One thing that we do, it's not, it's not illegal, so I'm just gonna say it. This is a great tip. <laughs> you can ask the billboard companies for their, their lowest priced billboards, billboards that haven't had any interest or don't have any expected purchasers for the rest of the year. You can buy those billboards for one month and you can buy them all at once. So you can buy it one month and then it could stay up all year or they could go down the next month. But we found that about half of them stay up for six to eight months for a one month spend. And some billboards are 700 bucks. So 700 for six months, eight months exposure, I think is a tremendous value. What are some of the other expenses within your business? Obviously expenses are a lot when you have a hundred employees. So you, obviously you always have to account for your payroll tax, things like that. The bigger you get, the more, the more buildings and offices you need. Being in town, we're in West Michigan, Grand Rapids, so that that requires us to have multiple locations and that gets very expensive in, in leasing obviously truck payments we have to have fleet leasing and you know a truck for a business costs more than if a homeowner was to buy it so the more trucks you buy kind of the, more, the higher the interest the higher the payments so we have a lot of trucks a lot of trailers leasing product and materials we're ordering about a million dollars worth of product a month and that is typically just on a net 30 so you have to constantly have a million bucks sitting around ready to pay as you get bigger your the numbers just keep growing i would say cash flow is the number one most important thing with starting a business, especially in construction. Comparing your first year in business to now, what does the revenue look like? Terms of growth. The first year was about a million bucks and there was no profit, it was a loss. Second year was about five million and then last year we did 20 million and this year we're gonna be doing 30 to 50 million. The key is, fast growth is is great, but the key is to making sure your your profit your profit and loss is good and that you're, you're able to pay all your bills, cash flow is the biggest thing. Usually when you're growing at that rate, it's difficult to get bank loans and things like that to support that rate of growth and it might be more wise to not grow so quickly. Not saying it can't be done, I've, you know, obviously we grew quicker than most people would say is healthy, but we're younger and we, we think it's really fun. I'm not a greedy person or somebody that even, I don't, I don't even need a paycheck. What I want to do is just create the best deck and give it to everybody for the best price. That's literally, that's, that's all I want to do. Is there other streams of revenue outside of the decks? that you bring in? Yeah, so other streams of revenue, we found the opportunity to actually purchase a dumpster company. And the reason we did that is because we found out the dumpster company we were buying from had 40 dumpsters and we were ordering 40 dumpsters. So we realized we were 100% of their business. We joked about it with the owner and she, she mentioned that she was actually selling the company to someone else. Well, that deal fell through, and so I immediately called her and said, I would love, I'd love to own it. And so we purchased a dumpster company about a year ago. So we purchased all 40 dumpsters, the truck, the driver, the whole thing, paid cash, and now we're actually using a bank to leverage those assets to double the size of that business. So that's keeping our business going with full control, saving us a little bit, and then also giving us the ability to add another avenue of income. So we're, we're adding 40 more dumpsters to serve other customers in West Michigan. So that's a great way that we're, we're adding um, some streams of income. The other way is honestly just adding other margin adders to our decks so we've hyper focused right on decks but you can still add things like pergolas lighting to decks different types of railing skirting under decking things like that there's a lot of different things you can add to a deck to add extra money coming in or extra revenue for the same customer or the same ad spend so our average ticket is twenty five thousand. that's because we are a composite deck builder you can get sub ten thousand all day with even a small composite deck or a wood deck but we found using premium materials it's worth the extra investment and of course we work with different lenders to make sure it's affordable for everybody it's not to say that everyone can afford a composite deck however if you're gonna stay in the home you really want a product that's gonna last and we found that the, the leading brands are not good for our climate how long does a project usually take projects on average take two weeks so they can take from anywhere from one day to a month but two weeks is our average you talk about the process of getting a client to finishing and how long that might take. The life of our customer, typically, you know, you would get the sale. We give them a three day right of rescission because we are selling in their home. So we give them three days to kind of think about it. We don't process their credit, you know, deposit their check or anything like that. But then after those three days, we're able to start working the file. So we'll, we'll get the financing done or deposit the check, get the project moving by scheduling a, a second measure appointment. So we have a measure tech that goes out. He'll measure the project uh, within a about a week and he'll double check everything, make sure the customer 
customer is comfortable with what we're proposing we're gonna do, make sure they understand what they're paying for, confirm any of the details, and then from there, the project will go into a permit status where it's gonna get a permit pulled and all the documents processed with the state. From there, we schedule the project to be installed. Um, and at that point, you're about one to two months in, depending on the, the township that is. And then at that point, once it's scheduled, you're typically at about 70 days from when you first signed up to when your project's going in. In March, you know, we're, we're selling about $200,000 a day. So like I said, with the bell curve, it's gonna go up. You know, our lead times will go up to 90, 120 days and then they'll come wait right back down to about 30 days by the time we get through winter. So we, we serve a good swath of West Michigan. So we're Grand Rapids down to south of Kalamazoo and then all the way up to Ludington is our farthest north. And then as far over as Lansing up to Alma, St. Louis, Mount Pleasant area would be the farthest kind of east we would go for now. We'd love to expand to Detroit in the future. However, that is um, a costly expansion that's gonna be met with a lot of challenges. Expanding into an area that's heavily, it's, it's considered top five deck market in, in the whole US. And West Michigan is considered a, a garbage deck market, for example, but Detroit's considered top five. Just the, the sheer number of competitors is, is tenfold. It is it's very challenging to go into a market that's heavily full of, of good people and good challenges. So you have to do it strategically and we are planning to do that with different manufacturer connections and things that we are working on behind the scenes. Is there any growth or expansion stuff that you can talk about? So my next expansion goal is actually Detroit. Green Shield would love to partner with manufacturers to bring in product directly. Our goal would be to eventually have our own lumber yard and deliver our own product, have a full white glove service. A lot of large builders are going that direction. However, there's they're faced with a lot of political challenges. But what we plan to do is eventually have our own lumber yard and manufacture our own rail and have more of a, a wholesale pricing for our customers. It drives our pricing way down for the customers, which is very important. Can you talk about the types of decks? So Green Shield uses a very unique deck board. I actually have some here. Um, so this is a True North is the manufacturer. It's manufactured in Canada. It uses no, um, no wood unlike Trex, Fiberon, all those companies that are leading the market. So this uses a rice husk and plastic. And the rice husk, is it's the shell of a rice. It's a waste material when you're manufacturing rice and termites can't eat it, bugs can't eat it. It's an incredible material for decking because it has a 0% water absorption. It moves and expands and contracts a lot less than Trex and the competitors. And it comes in at the same price or less. So we are hooked directly with the manufacturer. We're the only one that installs this product. There's six colors. It's actually double-sided, so if you did have um, some hurricane winds and your barbecue grill falls over, you can flip this board and no one was, would be wiser that it was damaged. It also has a heat blocking technology, so the boards are 20 degrees cooler than our competitors. We think that they're, they're absolutely beautiful six colors. Our customers agree. That's the main reason why you would choose us for decking the deck boards. In terms of construction, our biggest claim to fame is that we use in-house labor. We have our own training materials, our own above code books, essentially, where we, we retrain or train people from outside the industry to come in and do a better job. We're taking deck building to the next level. So we rewrote the book and we're building decks better, stronger. Our joist spacing is typically 12 inches on center instead of 16 inches on center. We use uh, different foundation products, including permacolumn, helical piers, things like this to create a stronger foundation, better decks really we want a, a product that you would want in, in like say say if, if i had to pick the perfect product for my house this is what i want to offer my customers so a customer might say hey i want a trex deck with composite rail i would say well we can't we don't do that we don't know how we've trained on aluminum railing true north decking that's what we know we know it to be the best and if that's not what you want then we're not for you which color is the most popular and then like what percent do people so our most our most popular color is going to be Tigerwood, and then it would go to Amazon Gray, then Hazelwood, Tropical Walnut, Brazilian Cherry, and then Ash Gray is a dark. It almost looks black outside, so almost nobody orders Ash Gray. I think it's awesome. It's good for the modern home, but most houses aren't modern in West Michigan, so that's just the reality. Hazelwoods are, are growing rapidly because it's a good mix in between, but I would say 30% of our business, another 30% of our business, then 20, and then the rest is mixed. Typically, you know, this darker brown and the darker gray are used as kind of like feature boards, borders, picture frames, what they call them, or things like that, benches, 
accent pieces. Usually people want a lighter color for heat, just goes best with their house. A lot of beiges, tans, cream color houses in West Michigan. So you're gonna see a lot of people go here, a lot of people go to Tigerwood, and then this is gonna be good on a white house, or honestly, gray can go anywhere, but you see you see this a lot with younger, the younger crowd is gonna want a gray color. Older customers are gonna want the browns like Tigerwood. Well, I, I would say too, I mean, Tigerwood, Tigerwood's gray because it goes everywhere as well. It's just people are going to, they don't really necessarily want it to look like wood. They want it to look like composite. They want people to know they paid for composite. We're seeing a lot of people go gray or this is like kind of like an in-between gray, more of like a barn wood. So this is what we call a reskin. So we're gonna be reusing this customer's frame, but you can see it's in really good shape. Maybe not built to necessarily code, um, but we add a lot of uh, new GRKs and structural screws to make it really strong. This is a, a price competitive way to bring costs down and still get a really good product. Um, you can you can tell this wood is is very sound. Basically, we test it, we make sure that the deck's good enough to be reskinned, and then we move forward with reskin if that's what the customer wants. So one of the things we add is new hardware we're missing and stuff. So what these diamond brackets do, they're a little bit more than a regular hurricane tie, but they really make those joists, um, prevents them from racking, makes it way stronger. And what's a reskin go for about? So re reskins can vary. Just a deck this size is um, anywhere from 10 to 20,000 because they need, you almost always have to rebuild the staircase. If you look at the stringers over there, you, you have a cut, um, cut treated material and it starts to rot much quicker. So your staircases can almost never be reused. You really shouldn't. So whenever you're reskinning a deck, always replace the stairs. There you can see we've got some new framing getting prepared for the new staircase going on this deck. And it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. We build our staircases a little bit wider than standard. Four foot wide, it's a much more grand staircase without breaking the bank. I have three tips of advice for other entrepreneurs or anyone looking to grow in life or business. One tip that I would have would be to always put the customers first in a consistent quality product. So if your customers are telling you this is a great product, this is exactly what they're looking for. You're getting five-star reviews. That's what you're good at. If you have a customer's consistently telling you like, eh, it's not exactly what I was thinking, or maybe they didn't necessarily leave you a bad review, but they're like, eh, it's not really what the picture said. That's something you don't want to sell, right? So you want to have consistent quality results all the time. So that's tip number one, have a product that the consumers want. If, it, if the consumers want it, it's going to help you a lot on the sales end. Secondly is make sure you're pricing your products accordingly. I'm seeing a lot of my competitors are underpriced or overpriced. Really, you need to, you need to know your numbers on what what your goals are, what your expenses are, what your overhead is. If you know all these things, you know exactly how to price it. I would not look at your competitors for pricing. I think that is the wrong way. Don't just price it less because you're trying to get the job. You have to price it on what you're worth and what the value is. If for some reason your prices are too high and you're not able to get bids, then I would say let's look at some products that, that are easier to sell at those price points. So maybe you're using the same product as everybody else and not able to get a, an extra amount of money for it. Tip number three, I would say is just no matter what you do in business, you never you never want to, you always want to tell the truth. Always tell someone, shoot someone straight, tell the truth whether they want to hear it or not, whether it's a customer, supplier, vendor. If you're having problems paying your bills, tell people the truth or at least don't lie. Be forthright with everything that you do in business. And I, I believe that that is how the construction industry needs to move forward. I think there's too many liars and cheaters, stealers. There's in the news all the time, there's contractors taking money from homeowners and going to Vegas and things like that. Avoid all those things. Avoid those things, be a truth teller. <laughs>